If you just bought a fancy new Mac and you want to know how to set it up to suit your needs, here's what I do right out of the box to have a much better Mac experience. First things first, the Finder. First thing you're going to want to do is go to the top left, click Finder, then Finder Settings. Next, what I do in the Finder Settings is uncheck the Show These Items options. This ensures you maintain a clean desktop no matter what. Also, you can see any external drives in the Finder sidebar anyways, so I personally don't really see a point in having them on your desktop as well. Also, you can change what shows up when you open a new Finder window. I like to select my home folder for this as it's the place I go to most often whenever I open up Finder. Now, click over to the Sidebar tab. Uncheck anything you wouldn't use very often from the sidebar, which will also clean it up. It's also best practice to add your home folder to the sidebar. This way you have easy access to all the important files in your home folder. Now click on the advanced tab. I personally like to check keep folders on top in Windows. What this does is consolidate all your folders on top of your individual file types, making it a lot easier to navigate and find exactly what you're looking for. Next, we're going to customize the toolbar. You can easily customize the toolbar in Finder and ensure you only have the things you actually need while also keeping your window looking nice and clean. Moving on to the dock. First things first, work on cleaning it up. Remove any of the default apps that you feel you'll never use and also add the apps that you'll use all the time. Also, I like to remove the launch pad icon as it's easily accessible in the function row of your keyboard. Next, you're gonna to wanna to resize the dock to whatever size you like best. I like to keep mine quite small as I have a pretty large monitor and I'm still able to see the icons very easily. Next, you're going to want to check off automatically hide and show the dock. I like to turn this on because when you're not using your dock, it goes away until you hover over the bottom of the screen. This makes for a much cleaner desktop and more screen real estate when you're doing anything on your Mac. Next, you can adjust the magnification. This is a personal preference, but I personally love the animation of the magnification feature. It makes the app you're hovered over more predominant and honestly, it just looks cool. Next, you're going to want to turn off suggested and recent apps in dock. Again, this is a personal preference, but for me, I want the things in my dock to only be the apps that I use. And I'm always trying to keep it as clean and aesthetic as possible. Having the suggested and recent app section just adds unwanted clutter, in my opinion. Next, you want to click minimize windows into application icon. This ties back to my dislike for having additional clutter in my dock. When you minimize a window, it sits in your dock beside your trash can. And the more windows you minimize, the more that these stack up, taking up additional space on your dock. Instead, if you turn on this setting, the minimize window will sit within the app icon of whatever app you were just using. All you have to do is click the corresponding app icon and your window will reappear. Next, we'll dive into the home screen settings. Now, this one's up to you, but you can select whether or not you have anything on your desktop or not. I love to keep my desktop completely clean to give it that fresh look and also perfectly be able to see my wallpaper. This setting ensures nothing ever shows up on your desktop. Besides, you can easily access your desktop via the finder to find anything you're looking for. Hot corners. Turn them off. <laughs> I've never used this feature and I honestly find it rather annoying. When I first switched to Mac OS, I would accidentally open up the Notes app all the time just because of my mouse cursor was hovering over the bottom right. We either when I was scrolling or just trying to select something on an app I was using in the bottom right and it was so frustrating. What you're gonna wanna do is scroll down and click hot corners. Now just change the bottom right from quick note to nothing and you're good to go. But if you do find this feature to be something that you would actually use, you can mess around with the settings and find something that works best for you. Moving on to the menu bar. You can drag any function from the control center to your menu bar, giving you easy access to essential things. I like to add the Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, focus modes, and sound settings, as these are things I use most often. Next, we're gonna talk about audio files automatically opening up in the music app. So when I was first getting used to Mac OS, I found it rather annoying that every time you downloaded an audio file or even just opened an audio file, it would open up by default in the music app instead of QuickTime. To fix this, simply right click on your audio file and click get info. Near the bottom, you'll see open with. All you have to do is change it from the music app to QuickTime and then hit change all. Now, every time you open a file of that same type, it will open with QuickTime. Now, one important note here, you want to make sure you do this for every type of audio file, whether that be WAV, MP3, AAC, what have you. Just do it for every single type of file, and then you never have to worry about this ever again. Thank God. Next, we're going to change our screenshot save location. By default, all your screenshots will automatically save onto your desktop. This can clutter your desktop very quickly. To change this, simply hit Command Shift 5 to open up the screenshot window, then go to Options and change the save option to downloads. Or if you'd like, you can pick a custom location to save your screenshots to. In macOS Sequoia, they made snapping your windows to different areas of the screen a lot easier. But something you'll notice right out of the box is a little gap between the windows, which annoyed me quite a bit. I know. This sounds a little OCD, but bear with me. Go to your settings, go to desktop and dock, scroll down to the windows section, and you'll see an option for tiled windows have margins. Turn that off and you'll be good to go. 
no more gaps. Next, we have widgets. I like to keep my weather and calendar app right on my desktop so that I can have at a glance information whenever I need it. I recommend having certain apps that you'll use very frequently right on your desktop if you find it's not too much clutter. And then widgets you'll use, but not as often, just leave those within the widget shelf. There's also plenty of amazing third-party widgets for the Mac. Let me know in the comments if I should make a video on my favorite and most useful third-party widgets. Now, something else you may have noticed on your Mac is that when you're in Safari and you download a file, it instantly opens when it's done downloading. This personally drives me insane and I find that it gets in the way of workflow and productivity. To turn this off, simply go to your Safari settings and under the general tab, you'll see open safe files after downloading. So all you gotta do is uncheck that box and now every time you download a file, it'll just go right to your downloads folder instead of distracting you from whatever you're doing. I'm only just scratching the surface with the tips I've provided. And as you are making these changes, make sure you do what's best for your workflow. Enjoy that shiny new Mac and I'll see you in the next one.